Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of PokéScape where we are going to teach you how to parse Pokemon data, go and do some analysis on it, and finally we are going to teach you how to build a GUI. Now to build a GUI, we need the Pokemon data.json file which we created on our first tutorial after cleaning the data and everything. And if you kind of forgot what it looked like, uh, I have the file available somewhere here. So here's Grape, and here's the JSON file. So basically our JSON file is a giant dictionary with all our Pokemon data, and that's exactly what we're gonna use. So going back, um, we are going to need our pandas data frame because we need to import the JSON file as a data frame. We are going to use requests because we actually need the pictures of our Pokemon. And sys is so that we can interact with the terminal. URL lib is for us to change the parsing URL, basically our RESTful API to get the pictures online. The URL lib will help us handle that. And finally, our favorite PyQt4, which is a GUI, a Python GUI library. So we're going to make our graphical user interface using this library. So first off, we make a class called Pokedex and we initialize our uh, Pokedex object. And we use super here because we are basically inheriting the QT GUI dot Q widget class. And after that, we create the self dot init UI. So our init UI will basically create the framework for our GUI, basically what our widget will look like. So here's here are some basic codes. Um, I'll make another tutorial for GUIs, but for now I'll just go over everything really fast. So this is going to be in grid views. All our buttons, pictures, data will be in a grid and we will basically put the coordinates of the grid when adding items to our widget. Then we import the JSON file using our pandas read JSON. I really love pandas. It just blows my mind how many data frames it can just, I mean, how many databases it can just deal with and make the ID our index. We'll have a drop-down menu. The drop-down menu will basically have the name of each of our Pokemons and a search button. So every time you click the search button, it's going to create all the information. And this will be a placeholder for our image. So this is just an empty queue label. And um, we'll get the data. So for this, we are basically showing how we're gonna format the writing. So I have a picture of the GUI right down here. So as you can see all this text, that's what that line is doing, how the spacing and everything will be. This is the drop down menu with the Pokemon names. We click the search button, all this appear, and this is Hitmonlee. So, oh, let me just scroll this to the left. All right, so we basically align everything and we customize our widget as in this is the size we want and we want the title to be Pokedex. And we have a function called center. So let me just quickly show you what center is. So center basically puts the uh, Pokedex at the center of her screen. It calculates all the pixels and here are the codes. It's uh, It first takes frame geometry from the Q widget and then it basically finds the available geometry of our screen and then centers it and then we just move it to the center. Um, then next up we have the run search. The run search is basically what we get when we click the search button. So button.click.connect, we connect to the self.run search function. 
And what that basically does is, so when you have a drop down menu, it PyQt4 won't instantly take that value. So when you click on it, you have an index available for each uh, value. For example, when you have the drop, drop down menu, you click Hitmon Lee. Hitmon Lee has a unique index on that drop down menu. So we collect that index and we use that to search to the name of the Pokemon on that index. So self.names is basically the name of the Pokemon, which we have made over here. So self dot drop down makes our combo box and then self dot names is the name of every single one of our Pokemon on the database. And then we add self dot items as in the list of names onto onto the drop down items. Once we have that, um, we collect the name. So this one will basically say, okay, what is the value for Hitmonlee? And then our condition is basically for a pandas data frame, we just need a Boolean condition to find that particular row. So for condition, we have name equal to val, which is basically Hitmonlee. Uh, we get the image for the RESTful APIs. So RESTful APIs are really convenient because you have the URL and you just simply change the URL every single time. So for our Pokemon picture, we know they're stored on this website, uh, Poke Pokemon DB, same place we got all our data from. You have the name of the Pokemon in lowercase and add .jpg. So I'll give you an example. So we put the URL and we want to look up Bulbasaur. So bul bulbasaur.jpg. And here's the picture of Bulbasaur. So we do the same for any Pokemon we want in lowercase and we can easily get it. We get the Q image and we load the image data. So the, here the URL library allows us to actually get the image binary from online and image.load from data this basically converts that binary into an image and then we have a pix map and we add the image to the pix map after we have the image we basically collect all our values as a name we put some space we add the value and then two spaces and we do that for every single parameter and our final one would be all our images or end with the writing and then we add it to our final text so going down here um, so this is all we have for the app itself now before we actually run the GUI we need to do a few things so over here is what we have is if name equals to main which basically means our Python GUI has been called we run this main function so here's what our main function is we first call app, which basically is our PyQt4 application. So we cannot run a PyQt4 GUI without the with a without a GUI application running. That's just how it was programmed. And the, about to create um, the delete later. This is something I got from online. So basically, when you're running a GUI on a terminal, it kind of messes up the system if you're trying to close the GUI. So this thing actually helps you from not damaging your kernel. And sys.exit basically allows you to exit the GUI cleanly. So let us run the GUI. There you go. So let us just pick any random Pokemon, Cubone. Ta-da! You have Cubone, ground, all the parameters, and the picture of Cubone. Let me just pick a few other ones. Here's Tangela, Rhyhorn. Um, let me be a little adventurous. What do we have? Typhlosion, mm, Spirit. Oh, I wonder if Torchic somewhere. Uh, it's not in alphabetical order. Oh well, should have worked on that. Um, let me look for a Pokemon I haven't seen before as I'm kind of one of those original 150 Pokemon. Yeah. So Blossom, 
Oh, I've seen that. Hmm. Don't know why I looked into that. Giraffe fortress. Come on, there has to be something I haven't seen yet. Duracross, please say that something. I guess artillery. Okay, that's a Pokemon I haven't seen before. I've seen a Pokemon card of it, but I don't really know what that is. Ho oh, oh, Celebi, Blaziken, Ekans, um, Lombre. Ooh. Well, there's a Pokemon I haven't seen before. So you have Lombre type water and grass. I never knew those two went together. I guess it's a Lily. Well, it's a neat Pokedex. You guys can use this code, run it on Python 2, make sure you have the Anaconda package and you can have this GUI and play around with it. Well, that's all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching and stay. please subscribe for more tutorials. Thank you very much and have a nice day.